of all times. Much closer now to my fighting at the bell. This arena holds about 6,000 spectators, and we have been told to expect a full house. It does look as though it's pretty much that way, and you can expect that every single spectator in the arena, by and large, is there to root for Sergey Kovalev. American referee Charlie Pitch. Harold, what do we need to know about him? Jimmy's an outstanding referee. Comes from that Turning Stone, New York uh, area uh, up near Syracuse. And, you know, he, they recently brought up to Europe to work uh, that very, very controversial second fight between Carl Frosch and George Groves. I mean, that's how much confidence the European people have in him. He'll let you work. He'll let you fight inside. He knows when to stop a fight. He really is one of the best referees in the world. The, you know, outstanding referee, Charlie Fitch. And Roy Jones, Columba begins moving side to side, and already Kovalev gets to him with a jab and a right cross. Yeah, the smartest thing he can do is move side to side, Jim, to try to not allow Kovalev to set up those big straight shots down the pipe. Make enough to turn to the left or the right, and he'll survive a little longer. Kovalev gets in another quick right hand there. And as hard as Chalemba may work to be elusive, Kovalev has shown tremendous skill in recent years, closing the gap, cutting off the ring, and making certain he can get in his big shots. I think he just hurt Chalemba with a right hand right there, Jim. But Isaac doing a great job of using his jab early. What is there about Kovalev's body or technique which contributes to his extraordinary heavy-handedness, Roy? Well, it's the way he keeps his legs so wide. If you watch his stance, his legs are really spread far apart. He never lets them really catch up to one another. See right there? Even when he bounces, his feet never come close together. A guy like myself, Tommy Hearns, who will keep that wide stance. It's very difficult to not be able to throw power anytime we get ready. And that's the same thing with Kovalev. He keeps those legs, the legs spread wide apart. Definitely to deliver treacherous punches at any time. So he has a power base within the first two minutes of this first round. He's managed to land some clean shots. Chilemba has landed also, but his punches don't have the same effect as those of Sergei Kovalev. But his legs being spread apart, uh, to what I'm talking about now, also are allowing him to be able to get away from some of those attacks from Kovalev. If you see, his stance is pretty wide, too. He's just not a puncher out of his stance because he doesn't commit with his body and his shoulders. And his no punches. Kovalev enters as the holder of three title belts in the light heavyweight division. This is the first title shot for Isaac Chalemba, who was one fight away from being the mandatory for the other light heavyweight title holder, Adonis Stevenson, but lost an elimination fight against Eliator Alvarez in Montreal, Canada, in his last appearance. And it was the loss to Alvarez in a close fight that wound up putting him in a position to fight Kovalev for three bets. And Kovalev is now swatting him around the ring at the end of round number one. And off the returns of this round, Roy, it looks as though Jalemba is going to have a hard time getting lost in there. A very hard time. And there is Kovalev's wife, who was supposed to have brought their one-and-a-half-year-old son to the fight. And now I'm told that he is indeed there. Here's round one action, Roy. Yeah, they see Kovalev come with that jab forward, followed by right hand. Then he lands another one over the top, but the biggest punch so far is that jab right there. That jab causes everybody all sorts of problems, Jim. Good defensive block on the hook by Shalimba. So with White Natalia and son Alexander at ringside, first time that his son, who was born shortly before the Hopkins fight in November of 2014, has attended a prize fight. Not that he'll remember it at under two years old. In round one, Kovalev landed 12 of 41 punches, including 5 of 21 jabs, and Chalemba was 8 of 26. Kovalev clearly dominant with his power shots in the first round. And what does Chalemba do to do better, Roy? Well, right now he's doing a good job of avoiding the right hand, but he has to hit Kovalev with something to make Kovalev respect him. Right now, Kovalev has no respect for Shalimba's power, uh, no respect for his punch at all. 
And you can't let Kovalev come at you, at you like this when he has no respect because sooner or later, he's gonna land a big punch. Chalimba is showing very good defense and a very good jab, but he has to land something effectively soon. Chalimba said before the fight, we've seen a mistake that Kovalev makes and we should be able to take advantage of it. After the fight, you'll be saying what an amazing job Chalimba did of solving Sergey Kovalev, but we won't tell you what his weakness is until we take advantage of it in the ring. If Chalimba can actually make good on that, Bernard Hopkins is going to be saying, hey, wait a minute, how could I have missed that? <laughs> <laughs> Bernard's take at this point is that Kovalev doesn't have a weakness. And of course, that would be his take after losing all of the 12 rounds that he's been in the ring with him. Kovalev is a very good fighter, Jim, a very smart fighter with power in both, both hands, but every fighter has a weakness. Good body work by Shalimba. Well, of course, every fighter makes choices in establishing his style. Kovalev's not trying to be a cute defender, not trying to be a deft counterpuncher. He's trying to be a destroying attacker. A crusher. Lands the jab, lands the right hand, lands the jab again. Kovalev is getting to Chalimba with 30 seconds to go in the second round. And to me, Jim, one of his most dangerous punches is that jab that he throws. A lot of times when he can't land the left hand, he, I mean the right hand, he sticks the right hand out as a range finder and really jabs that jab into his opponent's face. He's one of the guys for whom the jab is like a power shot. Exactly, like Big George. through a couple of Chalamba punches at the end of the round. Coming up next on HBO, immediately following this telecast. Stay tuned for Terrence Crawford, My Fight, for a revealing look at how Terrence Bud Crawford overcame adversity growing up in Omaha, Nebraska, to become one of the top fighters in the sport today. July 23, Crawford puts his skill to the test on HBO Bay per view against fellow undefeated 140-pound title holder Victor Pastor in a matchup featuring two of the division's brightest stars. Undefeated Terry Crawford, undefeated Victor Costo. The site of tonight's fight, Ekaterinburg, is the fourth largest city in the Russian Federation. In the second round, Kovalev landed nine of 30 jabs and landed 15 total punches in the round. And as Roy Jones pointed out toward the end of the round, Kovalev's jab often does the same kind of damage as a power punch. Like that jab right there, Jim. He's happy just landing that jab because it's so powerful. Sometimes it's a good body shot by Chilemba. Sometimes it takes the guy's mind off of the straight right hand because they don't want to be caught with the jab anymore. But Chilemba's doing a great job of negating that right hand. What is he doing to negate the right hand? He's dipping just a little bit as he sees Kovalev come forward. And it's causing Kovalev to go right over the top of his head with the straight right instead of landing it on his temple or on his chin. Well, Kovalev may want to unleash that left hook to the body, which was very effective against Jean Pascal. Yeah, that and that jab right there. His jab, you see, Kovalev is smart enough to know that if he can't land the straight right hand, he changes, takes the power off of it, then he uses the jab for the straight right. And he uses the right for the jab. <laughs> As he did just there. Chalamba trying to land that right to the body again. This time Kovalev blocks it with his elbow. And threw a hell of a jab right there. See that jab right there? That's a very effective jab. Twice to the body. Now the right hand to the body. Kovalev forcing Chalemba to drop his guard. And no doubt trying to set something up upstairs. Hey, 
One minute to go in round number three. Kovalev gradually breaking Chalemba down with power shots. And Chalemba's team has done a good job, Jim, of uh, respecting Kovalev's straight right hand. Right now, he's trying his best make, to make sure he doesn't get caught or knocked out by a right hand. And Chalemba just landed a good right hand on Kovalev just there. That was a quick enough, hard enough right hand shot to linger in Kovalev's mind now as he continues to work against Chalemba. So Chalemba's landed the right to the body and the right upstairs. Punches that can sting Kovalev and make him think twice about his approach. Kovalev is going right past it now and getting ready to throw more thunder as round three comes to a close. Yeah, I think Kovalev just landed a series of about three straight rights to the head. And there's wife Natalia Kovalev at ringside with one of Sergei's championship belts. Natalia and Sergei live full-time now in Los Angeles, as does the Kazakh star, Gennady Golovkin. Their presence in Los Angeles verifies that it is, for the moment, the world capital of the boxing culture. Knocking box numbers through C, three. You saw Kovalev right at 33%, 45 of 135. John David Jackson in the corner with Sergey Kovalev. They've become one of the most successful trainer-fighter combinations in the sport. And now round four begins, and Harold Letterman, <laughs> how do you have it on officially okay, through the first Jim, three rounds? I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Sergey Kovalev. You know, Jim, he, he not only is great with that left jib and that straight right hand, he's, he's the effective aggressor in this fight. Chalema keeps backing up, backing up, backing up, very rarely coming forward like you saw him just do. You, know, you can't get any power backing up constantly, and that's what he's doing, you know? He, he, he seems to be fighting very defensively, like, you know, he just wants to stay in the fight. He's backing up constantly. Kovalev taking the fight to him. Three to nothing, Sergey Kovalev. Well, Harold, if you're gonna hunt a polar bear with a 22, you can't be chasing him down. You gotta pick your shots smartly. You gotta stay away from him as much as you can. Why are you picking shots trying to pick him off? You can't just go in there on a bear with a 22. It just does not work. Chalemba just snapped Kovalev's head back with a good jab. Now he does it again. That's that Landing his jab down the middle. That's that 22 I'm talking about here. There you good go. jab. Be smart. Don't try to go in the overpower Kovalev. He's the crusher. That does not work. The biggest thing at stake here, aside from Kovalev's three light heavyweight title belts, is, of course, his plan to fight Andre Ward of the United States in a November matchup. Ward has a tune-up fight of his own against Alexander Brand coming up. But one of the reasons that Kovalev chose Isaac Chalimba, at least in the eyes of ring experts, was that Chalimba is defensively oriented. Ward, the likely opponent in November, is defensively oriented. Is Chalimba, in fact, a good stand-in for Andre Ward in this rehearsal? Well, for Kovalev, yes, it is, because Kovalev does not like these type guys, I and mean, these are the least likely opponents for him. He wants a guy that's going to stand there and trade. Ward won't stand there and trade. Ward is too smart for that, and neither will Isaac. So this is a great tune-up for Kovalev to get ready for that fight. Isn't Ward more likely than Chalimba? to step inside and try to confuse Kovalev close up. That's right. He won't back up and give Kovalev as much ground as Chilemba's giving him either. And he's a little bit more powerful than Chilemba. So, you know, you're looking forward to a great fight in the fall or the winter or whenever we do it. When Ward, or excuse me, when Chilemba backs up against Kovalev, as we've seen him do so many times, is he actually helping Kovalev to set up his power shots? He is in a sense, but not because he, Kovalev is better when you're coming at him. So when Kovalev has to chase him down, he's going away. It's not causing that collision. The worst punches are the ones that catch you when you're coming forward, and he's coming forward. So when he's hit, when hitting him as he's going backwards, it takes a little bit of the impact off of the punches. But it does allow Kovalev to step forward and gain momentum as he throws himself into the punch. So sooner or later, you suspect that Kovalev is going to land something solid. And Chalemba may have problems at that point. Of course, but right now what's saving him is that jab right there. 
So as soon as, as soon as Kovalev lines him up sometimes, he pops that jab out and it saves his life. Disrupting Kovalev's timing. Round four, now complete. World Championship Boxing returns August 6th as Andre Ward takes on Alexander Brand. With a fall date with Sergey Kovalev already on the calendar, a lot is at stake for Ward as he continues his quest to conquer the light heavyweight division. August 9 marks the premiere of Hard Knocks, the training camp of the Los Angeles Rams. We go inside camp for an unfiltered look at the Rams as they prepare for the upcoming season in the organization's return to Southern California following a 21-year absence. Los Angeles Rams has an interesting ring. As we get ready for round five to begin, CompuBox numbers show that Isaac Chalamba may have found something in the fourth round, which can bother Sergey Kovalev as the fight continues. Because in that round, Chalamba landed 15 of 37 jabs. And that's a very accurate rate, Roy Jones, very for the jab. Very accurate, and that's his best punch in this fight. Because that punch saves him as well as gets him points. So I think his jab is most effective. And if he could throw a hook off of it every now and then, it could also help him. Good uppercut by Chalamba. So he's giving Kovalev something to think about with his footwork and his jab. He's giving Kovalev good work in rounds that the Russian appears to be winning. And while, of course, Kovalev would love to have another gaudy knockout to entertain the home fans, the fact that he's getting rounds against a good boxer is maybe the best possible preparation for his fight against Ward in the fall. It's most definitely the best preparation for that fight. And like he said, he has to focus on this fight because Chalimba is a puzzle that you'll have to figure out. Now, you may beat him, but he's going to make you work for a victory. And to knock him out, you have to work extra hard for it. He's remember taking some gambles now, so now I think he feels like he's comfortably in the fight. I think it's actually the best I've ever seen Chalemba fight, and it suggests to me that getting back together with the trainer who helped him at the beginning of his professional career has reawakened some confidence in Isaac Chalemba. Reawakened some confidence, and he also has gotten a lot of, he has gained a lot of experience from the sparring sessions that he's had, from the visitation to different gyms in the United States of America. So along with that preparation, I think it was the best thing for him. Because not many people expected that he'd still be standing at this point in a fight against the Crusher Kovalev. No, the standard book on this would have been two round knockout, three round knockout because of the dramatic difference in power. But Chalemba is showing that balance, timing, craft can keep a fighter in the fight against somebody who overpowers him constantly, even as Kovalev does. A rare intervention from referee Charlie Pitch, who mostly has been standing back and letting them fight. Oh, good quick left hook inside by Sergey Kovalev. Countering over the right hand by Chalemba. This is turning into a good fight, Jim. Turning into a thinking man's fight. Yes, it's a boxing match. Five rounds in the books. He see Kovalev come in with a body shot right to the body, followed by a good left hook to the head. Probably the best left hook he's landed, but it didn't phase Chalimba much. And that's really interesting at this point in the fight, Jim, because we're expecting to be able to overpower Chalimba, but right now it doesn't look like that's happening. Chalimba's chin holding up pretty well against Sergey Kovalev through five. 
and Chalemba may have won the fourth round. But by and large, it appears that Kovalev has been in control. We'll hear from Harold Letterman as to his unofficial scorecard in the seventh round. Did we make it that far? Do you think he may have won the fifth round? I think he may have won the fourth when he landed 15 out of 37 oh, jabs when he when he landed more punches than uh, than Kovalev did. But now we just caught a glimpse of Harold's unofficial scorecard and it appears that Harold gave him the fifth, not the fourth. That means that it's conceivable a judge could have given him the fourth and the fifth. Conceivable. Make it interesting for Kovalev if he had to think his way through the middle fortunes of a fight in which he was expected by most to score a fairly quick knockout. Now Kovalev is turning the pressure on a little bit. Which could indicate that Chalamba has frustrated him just a little bit. Just a little bit. And you hear Russ over there telling, telling Isaac to put the hands together, not one at a time. That was a good Hard shot. Hook by Chalamba. His best punch together. of the fight. Yes, that was a good hook, putting them together like Russ told him. <laughs> Incredible. Has no effect on Kovalev, though. And now watching Kovalev get dragged through rounds into the middle portion of a fight in which he was so heavily favored. We're always reminded that fighters who come home to fight before the home audience sometimes underperform. Distracted as they may be by the pressures of their friends being in the arena, family members seeing them fight for the first time in a long time. This is only the third time in his professional career that Kovalev has fought in Russia, and the first time he's done so since he became a bona fide superstar in the sport. And I'll never forget Evander Holyfield almost getting knocked through the ropes in Atlanta by smoking Burt Cooper in a similar situation, a hometown fight against a supposed showcase opponent. Not to mention that the last time he was here, like we said, he had a tragedy. So with all of that going on and that tragic memory, who knows? But I think the Crusher has a strong enough mind to overcome all of those obstacles. It's just a matter of him figuring out uh, Isaac Chalimbo. I think he's a good enough boxer, too, that if he has to go the distance and carve out a decision here, he'll be able to make the tactical adjustments down the stretch to ensure that he can do that. But that probably wasn't plan A. No. And you got to get Chalimbo credit, too, though, Jim. Chalimba has been in the ring with some really good fighters. He even sparred with Arthur Vedabiev, so he knows what real power is. Arthur so. Vedabiev, by the way, is another unbeaten Russian light heavyweight based in Montreal who had two amateur wins over Sergei Kovalev. Isaac Shalema coming in low, and this time he came with a body shot. That's what set that left hook up. You see him see Kovalev backing straight out right there. So with that happening, he uses that jab a lot too, but he's keeping Kovalev backing straight back. There you see Kovalev laying that straight right hand. And a quick left hook on the inside. Now round seven of a scheduled 12. We get past the midway point of the fight. And let's go to our unofficial ringside <laughs> scorer, Harold Letterman. How do you have it scored halfway through? Okay, Jim, I got it four rounds to two, 58-56, Sergey Kovalev. You know, Jim, as I see this fight, Kovalev loses rounds where he gets lazy, and that's all there is to it. I, I mean, if the guy, you know, normally he comes out, he throws a zillion punches. He looks to get you out of there. We saw it when he knocked out Jean Pascal in his last fight. He was real busy. In this fight, he's not real busy at all. He was busy, you know, through, through the first four rounds, but then after that, all of a sudden, he slows up, you know? He lets Chalumba take it away from him. He lets Chalumba out jab him. I mean, he got hit with a left hook in round five, that almost, uh, round six, that almost took his head off, you know? Got hit with a real good left hook. So I think I think he just blows rounds by sort of getting lazy. If he would step up the pace, I'm sure he would knock out Chalumba. Be as it may, four rounds to two, Kovalev. 
So Harold scores the fifth and sixth rounds for Chalemba. And I'll point out once again, in the fourth round, Chalemba outlanded Kovalev and was 15 of 37 in jabs. I thought he won that round. So it's conceivable here that an official judge might have an even fight through six rounds on the scorecards between Chalemba and Kovalev. And again, Roy Jones, this is the best I've ever seen Isaac Chalemba look. Best fight he's ever been in, Jim. Biggest fight he's ever been in. He's never been in a fight where he had three titles and his life on the line. Average punches per round through six. Kovalev 13 out of 43. Chalemba 11 out of 37. Not much to choose there. Kovalev definitely is the harder puncher and lands with more impact. But Chalemba has been confusing him with timing and footwork for the last couple of rounds. And with a power puncher like Kovalev, sometimes the more frustrated they get, the less effective they are. And sometimes the fact that they are power punches but cannot land that power is what gets them mostly, uh, most frustrated. And right now, Isaac is making it very difficult for Kovalev to land big punches. This is a primetime television show in Russia, appearing on one of the larger Russian television networks. This is a oh, giant a event shot. for Sergey Kovalev, and he just found the shot that he's been looking for. A right hand down the pipe that nearly knocked Chalemba's head off, to use Harold Letterman's phrase. <laughs> and I think a body shot is what set that shot up, Jim. Charlie Pitch has to decide whether to allow Chalemba to keep going. He's going to have 16, 15, 14 seconds. Kovalev looking for the finishing punch. Yeah, and Chalemba holding on by the waist. Very smart by Chalemba, but I think a body shot set that up. And round seven comes to a close. A round in which the first knockdown of the fight emerges on a right-hand shot from Kovalev to the chin of Isaac Chalemba. You see Kovalev coming forward, lands a beautiful body shot right there. That body shot hurt really bad. So Chalemba goes straight back trying to get away from the body shots, and bam, there goes the straight right hand that set him down. The Lost his concentration, finally got hit by the right hand. Yeah, the body shot took his concentration. Then he got caught by the right hand. Isaac Chalemba in a 29-fight professional career, has never been knocked out. Oh, good hook by Isaac. And see, Jim, this will makes us wonder, because in a ward fight, that hook will be even harder. So, you know, he has some work to go do if he's gonna fight ward. Kovalev, that is. Talking about Kovalev. Unless he thinks he can walk through Ward's punches the same way he's walking through those of Isaac Chalemba, and that probably wouldn't be the case. I hope, I know he's a much smarter fighter than that. Um, you know, he's a very good fighter, very good technician, knows and respects all of his opponents, so I know he doesn't think that would be the case. Good head movement by Kovalev. Chalemba firing shots here in the eighth, trying to show Kovalev he's awake and alive after having gone down on the right hand in the last round. Kovalev doing some good hand feints, good body, good body work and throwing combinations now, trying to set that second or third shot up. I think he smells blood in the water. Those hand feints that Kovalev showed you a few seconds ago that's not what we used to associate with European fighters. That's American gym stuff. That's exactly right. That's called true, ex true professional experience. Good body shot by Chalimba. Kovalev 
fighting just a few miles away from Kelyabinsk, the city in which he grew up amid considerable poverty and deprivation. Finally decided to become a professional boxer, he says, so that he could try to earn enough money for his family to pay for electricity. Chalemba's hurt again. Throw that jab again, Jim, and the body shot. Now with that jab again, that jab causes all kinds of chaos late in the fight. Total left with 30 seconds to try again for a finish. Couldn't get it done in the last round as Chalemba managed to play out the string in the last 15 seconds. Now Kovalev still landing big shots. 20 seconds to go in the round. Just missed with a right hand that might have finished it. And good fight before the right hand. That's when you see that good experience that Kovalev has. Five seconds to go. Oh, good oh. shot. Another solid right hand to the left side of the head by Kovalev. And now Jalemba makes it out of round eight. So we're still going in Ekaterinburg, Russia on Wednesday night. Catch the next installment of Any Given Wednesday with Bill Simmons as Bill, along with special guests, touches on subjects spanning pop culture, sports, entertainment, the arts, and technology. Catch it on HBO, HBO On Demand, and HBO Go. And July 26, a real sports investigation shows that the International Olympic Committee, which claims it exists to promote peace and a better mankind, in reality often serves itself first at a staggering human cost. Here's the thing I like about Kovalev. You see him come in, he faces the right, faces the jab, faces another jab, then throws a hard jab, then throws a hard right, then throws another cross jab pretty hard. Took all those feints and mixing the feints with the punches to land a clean shot at the end. Brilliant stuff by Kovalev. Round nine begins. Sergey Kovalev in the white trunks. Isaac Chalemba in the black. Four rounds left. And most ring critics didn't think we'd get this far, even though Jalemba has never been a knockout victim in 29 prior fights. Total punches landed through this point in the fight. Kovalev has landed 113 to 80 for Chalemba. A couple of rounds ago, those numbers were much closer. Sergey Kovalev has swamped Chalemba with power punches in the seventh and eighth rounds, knocking him down in the seventh and coming close in the eighth. Yeah, that knockdown seemed to have given Kovalev the momentum, and now he's just living and cruising off of that momentum. Knows that he can knock Chalemba down, knows that he can hurt Chalemba, and Chalemba knows it as well. Therefore, he just kind of stays in his lane and tries to get through the night without being knocked out. 11 minutes left in the fight. Just a little bit under 11 minutes left in the fight. As Kovalev continues stalking, hunting, looking for another trademark knockout. Chalemba still showing that he's in the fight right there. He went at him with the overhand right. To keep Kovalev on his toes. Oh, good right hand counter by Kovalev. Landed a good right hand, but then Chalimba countered with a good right hand. And those are the type of things that you look for uh, in his preparation for a war fight. Because those things will happen in a fight with Andre Ward. Ward's counter shots would likely be sterner than those Chalimba's been able to hand out. That's something that Kovalev will be looking at as he prepares for that fight. If, in fact, we continue to go forward towards Sergey Kovalev versus Andre Ward, likely in November. A good fight, by the way, Jim. You love to see guys take on the better opponents in the weight class. The fact that Ward moved up to take the fight. The fact that Kovalev has been asking for all the best fighters to come fight him. I mean, you just love to see champions like that. I think it's the best fight in boxing simply because most ring critics can't tell you who's, who's going, going to win. Perfect. And I agree.
Round 10 of a scheduled 12 set to begin. In years past, we might have made more of the fact that Isaac Chalemba is being trained here by a woman. But of course, after our experiences watching Ann Wolf train James Kirkland, no one is surprised or in any way taken back by the idea of a woman training a fighter as Jody Solomon is training Isaac Chilemba here tonight. And now as round 10 begins, Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got it. Uh, seven rounds to two, 88, 81, Sergey Kovalev. You know, Jim, round eight was interesting. I mean, Kovalev almost had him out again, didn't knock him down. I would definitely call that 10-8 without a knockdown. And it just goes to show how good a referee Charlie Fitch is. I mean, some referees would have stopped it in round eight because of the fact that Kovalev was badly hurt, like you said, at the you end of the Lampo. round. Yeah, but uh, Chalamba was badly hurt at the end of the round. But Charlie's a very good referee. He knew enough not to stop the fight. He let it go, like I said. Excellent referee. But be as it may, Sergey Kovalev, seven rounds to two. He gets two points in round eight when he didn't score a knockdown. Two points in round seven when he did score a knockdown. And what I like also about Kovalev, Jim, is he shows great defense after he punches. Sometimes when he throws punches, he uses those shoulders to, gap, to guard that chin, or he steps to the left or the right like he did right there. Jalemba getting a foot on to Kovalev's foot there. That's what knocked Kovalev off balance. <laughs> Seven and a half minutes now left in the fight as Kovalev continues to hunt for the knockout. Will there be damage to Kovalev's reputation if he's not able to knock Chalemba out, Roy? Or is this a case where, because of Chalemba's style and the quality of what he's done in the past, no one will be diminishing Sergei for failing to get the KO? No one that is a uh, true professional or knowledgeable about the game will give him any criticism for this because Chalimba, as you know, is a very difficult guy to deal with. He just came off of a fight where it could have gone either way in most people's eyes, and he'd have been fighting for the WBC title instead. So Isaac Chalimba is not a guy who's been known as a pushover. He only has four losses. He's never been stopped, I don't think. And he's just a guy that you get what you see. So he's not like a guy you're going to push over or walk over in a boxing ring. You are correct. He has never been stopped. Not the most powerful puncher, but he wins without being a power puncher. So that tells you he has to be very, very crafty in, those, in between those ropes in order to get that many victories without much power. It's a mark of how overwhelming Kovalev's reputation is, reputation is at this point that most ring experts reflexively assume he would knock Jalemba out despite the fact that Chalemba has never previously been knocked out in 29 assignments. And it's still a possibility that I don't get it wrong. If anybody could do it, it would be the crusher. He doesn't seem frustrated. As 10 rounds are complete, coming up next on HBO, immediately following this telecast, stay tuned for Terrence Crawford, my fight, for a revealing look at how Terrence Bud Crawford overcame adversity growing up in Omaha, Nebraska, to become one of the top fighters in the sport today. In July 23, Crawford puts his skill to the test on HBO pay-per-view against fellow undefeated 140-pound title holder Victor Postol of Ukraine in a matchup featuring two of the division's brightest stars. And there's Natalia, and there's Alexander, who's saying, go away, camera, go away. Or maybe, maybe Alexander is jabbing the camera. Needs a little work on the jab form, but hey, he's only one and a half. <laughs> wait, wait, wait this corner up, please. CompuBox numbers through 10. Kovalev landing 136 out of 449. Chalemba 103 out of 382. Those percentages are fairly close. Kovalev landing the harder shots. He was 12 of 44 in the 10th round as he was looking for big punches. There's that good jab again, Jim. Stick it right out like a jab and throw the jab like a right. <laughs> good body shot by Shalemba.
throughout the fight, Chalimba has been able to keep Kovalev honest with pot shots here and there. Right hands to the body and the head. Occasionally a jab. It's hard for him to really grab Kovalev because if he exposes himself to grab Kovalev, he'll probably get caught with something that'll take him out. Good body shot. Left hand lands for Kovalev. Momentarily knocks Chalimba's head back. Crowd roars with that. And that was the fifth punch of a five punch combination in round 11. Pretty good for a light heavyweight. Well, Kovalev supports his power punching by staying flexible. Does yoga, does Pilates, a variety of unusual things in the gym aimed at keeping his muscles long, loose, and limber. That's the way a puncher wants them to be. Right hand for Chalemba. Lands against an off-balance Kovalev. See a jab right there, Jim. That jab is what saved him from that straight right hand for an 80% of the night tonight. Good right hand by Shalimba. And Shalimba makes it through round 11, so we will go to the 12th. Once again in round 11, while Kovalev was searching for a knockout shot and Chalemba was trying to land just for the sake of landing, he wound up landing more punches in the round by CompuBox count. 13 for Chalemba, 11 for Kovalev. Sergey won't say afterward probably that he was frustrated, but he may be getting just a little bit frustrated here in the late rounds, looking to land one more big shot and put Chalemba down again, just as he did in the seventh with the right hand. But well, when you come home, Jim, you always want to surprise or satisfy your fans with a knockout. Not always the easiest thing to do. That's why we see so many people fall short on that because they go out there looking for a knockout for the hometown fans. However, I think Kovalev is a disciplined enough fighter here to understand that the guy that he has in front of him is not a guy that you're just going to walk through and knock out. He's a puzzle that has to be figured out. This was a great 12 rounds for Kovalev if it goes the distance. Uh, great preparation for a long fight against Ward because he did all the things, he sees a lot of the things that he's gonna see in front of Andre Ward and he'll have to be disciplined like this in order to be able to stay there and deal with Ward. So he has to go the 12 rounds and win a decision, probably the ideal preparation for the Ward fight because Ward is almost knockout proof. <laughs> if anybody in the sport is absolutely knockout proof. He may be the guy. He may be. Great chin, great defensive skills, great reflexes, great wisdom. That's Andre Ward. Minute 20 to go. Kovalev seems at this point content to go ahead and work out the string and accept what will likely be an easy decision victory over Isaac Chalemba. 
And it's the smartest thing for him to do because Isaac has hit him with some clean shots tonight. So and you don't want to see him get caught with something stupid that makes no sense or get something that causes him a cut. Just makes no sense for that. So let MMA here. Chalemba scores a tackle. First one of the evening. A takedown. Double left with one more big rally. He lands a right and a left hook. Beautiful left hook. Lands a jab. Misses with the left hook. Now lands another left. And a right. 20 seconds to go. Kovalev yep. looking for a right hand. Blood Ch coming out of Chalemba's nose. Chalemba has a heart though, Jim. He's trying to battle here with the crusher. Something we don't see many people do. And the ones that do do it don't survive the next round to tell about it. Chalemba has taken a lot of hard shots. For the honor of finishing 12 rounds against the crusher. And Isaac Chalemba is still without a knockout against him on his record. And Sergey Kovalev is probably still unbeaten. <laughs> Kovalev who entered at 29 0 and 1 with 26 KOs. Hoping to have scored his 30th win, but the knockout number stays at 26. Harold, what was your unofficial score? Call? <laughs> okay, so I got it. 118, 108, 10 rounds to two. Sergey Kovalev. Yeah, Jim, I, I just think that he's the harder hitter. I thought he deserved 10 rounds because of the fact that he landed the hardest shots. You know, he was the aggressor throughout the fight. Uh, Isaac Chalamba, great jaw. I mean, big heart, great jaw. Took some great shots. Did really well in, in winning two of those middle rounds, five and six. But, you know, all in all, it was Kovalev's power that won him most of the rounds. Ten rounds to two, Sergey Kovalev. And the seventh and eighth were both 10-8 rounds unofficially on Harold's scorecard. Harold, who are the three official judges who will score this at ringside? Okay, Jim, I may have a hard time pronouncing the names, but be as it may. Uh, the first guy is, is Zoltan and Yeti. Uh, he's from Hungary. He worked Sergey Kovalev's KO in eight rounds over Jean Pascal. So I thought, he, you know, he had that right. He had it 68-64 for Kovalev. He's a pretty good judge. Uh, Chris Flores from Arizona, good judge from the United States. And lastly, Gustavo Yarkin from Nicaragua. We go to the scorecard. Zoltan and Yeti scores at 117, 110. Chris Flores scores at 116 to 111. Gustavo Yorkin scores at 118 to 109. All three scores go to the winner. And still, the undefeated, undisputed light heavyweight champion.